All right, so let's do another example. Things we can do now that we know a few Taylor series, right? We want to evaluate this integral, 0 to 1, e to the minus x squared. Maybe this comes up, we're calculating something like, you know, area under a standard normal curve or something like that, right? We're trying to calculate a probability, let's pretend. No, we're just doing an integral. But this sort of thing could come up, right? But if, if, if you're in stats class, you're not using Taylor series necessarily, right? Um, you're probably looking this up in a, in a table, or you're using stats software to calculate these things, right? But this could come up in a, in a probability calculation, and let's pretend that you know, we're working 100 years ago and we need to know how to do this, right? We're pre-calculator. How do we evaluate that integral? Well, we can't use the fundamental theorem of calculus because we don't have an antiderivative for this function, right? This is one of these standard examples of a function where there is no antiderivative that we can write down in terms of elementary functions, right? So, how do we proceed? Well, we can find a Taylor series for this thing. If we can get a Taylor series for it, we know that we can integrate term by term. So here's e to the x, right? So we have this. We have e to the x is the sum, and going from 0 to infinity, x to the n over n factorial, okay? So if I want to do e to the minus x squared replace x by minus x squared. Okay? And we can clean that up a little bit. Okay. There's my power series. Okay. So now that I have a power series, we can integrate. What is this going to be? This is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of sum and going from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the n x to the 2n over n factorial. Okay. Integrate with respect to x. So we can rewrite that as the sum and going from 0 to infinity of the integral from 0 to 1. And maybe put that minus 1 to the n out front. Um, I guess we could put the n factorial out there as well, but it gets a little cramped. x to the 2n, n factorial, dx. Okay. So what do I get? I get the sum n going from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over n factorial. Now we've got to take the antiderivative, right? 2n plus 1, right? We get x to the 2n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 1, power rule for antiderivatives. Evaluate from 0 to 1. Oh, actually that's it, right? 1 to the, one to the 2n plus 1 is 1. 0 to the 2n plus 1 is 0. There it is, okay? We have, our, we have our series. And actually, the, one of the nice things about that series, it's alternating. So we have the alternating series expansion theorem. And that means if I'm, let's say I'm, my job is filling out tables with values for these things because some poor stats student has to use it or something like that. Uh, I want to make sure, usually I think those tables, they usually give you the first five or six decimal places or something. So I can use the alternating series approximation theorem to figure out how big n has to be to have my answer accurate to, let's say, five decimal places. And I can actually get that decimal approximation using this particular power series, right? So this can be a very powerful technique, right? If you're interested in, in numerical approximation, right? This could end up being more efficient than doing something like, let's say, Simpson's rule or trapezoid rule or something like that. It's going to depend on the function, of course. Uh, but that's pretty simple, right? This is a pretty simple series to sum. In fact, this is something that I can easily put into like an Excel spreadsheet. I can put that into an Excel spreadsheet, start just, you know, put that formula in, copy it down for the first, let's say, 20, 30 rows or something, get those values, watch until, you know, I don't even need to necessarily calculate in advance how many terms I, I need. 
Just start copying it down the spreadsheet until the first five decimal places stop changing and you've got it, right? That's nice. That's a very powerful result.